Hi, Chris Albanese, Director of Education, Real Estate Academy of Orlando. We're back with some more math help here. And the problem we're looking at today is calculating the proration uh, for an investment property, specifically when we have prepaid rent. Now, we're going to deal with this issue anytime we're selling a property where there's a tenant in place, meaning the tenant is paying rent to the current owner. When the new buyer purchases that property, the money for whatever portion of the month where we uh, the rent has been collected does need to be passed on over to the buyer. So we're going to figure out how to calculate that. But we've got a question. Uh, so we've got a duplex is scheduled to close on February 15th. This is not a leap year. The seller collected rent for February at the first of the month amounting to $658 per unit. Now, according to the purchase and sale agreement, the buyer is due the rental income for the day of closing. To calculate the proration using the actual number of days in the month. So one thing I want to point out before we go any further with this is, and this is one of those little tricks and uh, issues that you're going to see a lot. Uh, when it comes to multiple choice questions, state exams, school tests, you can find little things that they're going to try to trick you a little bit. Now, in this example here, they're using the word duplex. Now, if you don't know what a duplex is, well, that means that there's uh, more than one uh, property here. Maybe one single house, but there's two separate units. So two units is going to be a duplex. Now, what we need to know for that is we're going to multiply the rent here by two. So many times if you see a question like this, you might see duplex or triplex or quadruplex. Uh, so make sure you multiply the rent by the actual number of units that they're telling you. Uh, if you don't, there's more than likely one of the incorrect multiple choice answers will be, uh, in this case, probably half of what our correct answer should be because uh, it should be doubled. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. Okay, so what we have here is February. Uh, this is obviously a 28-day month. It tells us it's not a leap year. So whenever we're doing a prorate for an uh, individual month, we want to start with the actual number of days that that month has. Now, in this case, the month has 28 days. So I want you to visualize it like this. Here's the, the calendar, and there's going to be 28 days in the month here. Now, what proration means is to separate out what portion belonged to the seller who owned it previously versus what portion is going to be owned by the buyer after the day of closing. Now, if the buyer owns it on the day of closing, like they say in the question here, that means uh, right up until midnight, the day before closing, the seller owns the property. So in our example here, if we're closing on the 15th, that means the seller owned it for just 14 days out of that month. Now, how many days is the buyer going to own it? Uh, basically take the number of days in the month, in this case 28, subtract out the number of days that the seller owned it, which is 14, and that's going to give us the number of days to prorate to the buyer. So in this case, it is 14. Now, always be careful when you're uh, doing your prorates here and never guess. Uh, one problem I see a lot of students use is when they see the 15th of the month, they automatically think it's middle of the month and they want to split it 50-50 between the, the buyer and the seller. Uh, in this case, a 28-day month, that actually works. It is 50-50 between the buyer and the seller. However, if this was a 30-day month or a 31, uh, the numbers would be different. So make sure you do actually calculate the number of days before you continue on with your prorate. Now, we figured out now that we do need to have 14 days given over to the buyer here. So we'll take our 14 days and we'll go ahead and delete everything else because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so now let's take our uh, rent per unit, which is 658. We're going to multiply that by 2 because it is a duplex, and that's going to give us $1,316. So that's the amount that the seller collected at the beginning of the month. So again, we're going to split that between the buyer and the seller here. Now, the easiest way to do this is to figure out uh, how many, what's the, the dollar per day of rent? So in this case, we've got 1316 for the whole month. So we're going to take 1316 and we're going to divide that by the number of days in the month, which is 28 days. Now, what that's going to tell us is uh, the rent is actually $47 per day. Uh, so in our example here, the buyer is going to own it for 14 days. 
So our next step would be to multiply $47 a day by 14 days. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's going to end up with exactly $658. And that's our answer. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any other questions, please uh, write to us at info at reaorlando.com or visit us online at Real Estate Academy of Orlando. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any suggestions for other math problems that might be giving you some trouble, uh, please let us know and we'll do a video for that as well. Thanks again.